Hey guys, this is Tech Tyro here again. Uh, I am your host, Riley Miller, and this is the third episode of the branding web series. What I'm going to show you today is uh, how to manipulate fonts and then take those fonts and switch them into a new idea based on uh, your approach. So if you wanted to figure out just how you wanted your fonts to sit in a layout standpoint, uh, I will show you how to edit those fonts individually and then manipulate them so it it conveys a different idea and it's not really static towards just that font choice. It's uh, your own way of being creative and making something new out of something that's already made. So that being said, we'll stick to the rubric uh, of a 2 by 3 kind of ratio. We won't go anything above that just as per the client or tech tire here. We want our font to sit uh, longer than we do uh, on top of each other. So <clears throat> from here now, going to start with just the one font. We'll put these two guys off to the side, down below, and make this guy bigger. So if you remember in the other episode where I show you how to isolate uh, splines and um, all these points, we're going to right click create outlines and then we're going to ungroup it by control shift and G so now each is its own master kind of thing I have a vision in my head and it's taking this T and stacking them so we're going to take both T's together line them up this is the equal kind of horizon and we'll make these guys bigger. I want to stack this guy on top of it. So just to make sure it's in front, it's going to be control shift right bracket. Now that brings it to an upper layer. We'll give this a stroke and click here. Stroke value is white. Simple guy. Uh, up the point value on it, maybe a four point. We'll give this a four point two so they have the equal weight. Actually, quickest way to do that would be to get your eyedropper tool, put them on top of each other. So now we got these two T's, <clears throat> and then we'll take these guys and select these guys as well, keep them all in the same size. Bob's your uncle. There's our first font choice. So I really like how that came together. Simple, <clears throat> straight to the point, and it's readable. So you can look at the two T's. It's, it's a double T basically stacked on top of each other with the same words in a box. So that's sleek, that's nice, and that can sit up and if you're thinking of a web base, that would be a, a top corner kind of icon, and it represents like a home icon essentially. So this, I will now group together with Control G, and we'll just set this off to the side. So we got that there, and I'll show you how to fix that white part later. It's pretty easy. It's basically importing it into Photoshop and then just deleting the white, and there you have a, a prime vector there, just black. So now we'll hit uh, Control 2, lock that guy in place, not moving anywhere. This guy now, we've got our, our next uh, font choice. So my approach for this guy now is probably going to be a little bit different to what I did before since it has so much more character. I'm going to essentially <clears throat> work off what the, the font is already trying to convey and make uh, a standpoint for it that kind of represents what we want to look for anyways. So from here I'm kind of thinking connecting the T's We've got a bit of a gap, so we'll control shift D again. These are their own thing. And we'll make the T's bigger. Maybe not that big. Hold this guy. Click down, hold shift, drag it off to the side, keeps it on the same plane. 
probably want to back this guy up as well. So we'll just use the arrow keys here. Got equal gaps. And then what we'll do is we'll select these points. We'll select these points. Shortcut here, connect them. This is align center. And there's a little bit of a gap, if you can kind of see it. Not when you get too close, but when you're far away, that, that's the part that bothers me. So do that there. Perfect. So now we've got that. Uh, what I'm going to do here is just select these points and close off this gap. Uh, and to stay within the theme, we'll keep the lines running. So now it's kind of a motherboard. <clears throat> and so they all kind of stay within the same box. We'll line these guys up. And we'll line these guys over. We'll get these guys lined up with these. Centered. And now just thinking of other ideas that we can kind of tweak it, make it look cool, make it look, uh, I don't know, more unique in compared to what the font was before. We'll, we'll take away these two, I think. Bring it up here. Give it some happy gaps. Probably want to. I like the the hard edges that we've got going on. Uh, line these up center. And keeping a theme of a small gap between it, since like when we look at motherboards, they are usually pretty close uh, in line with each other, of course, because they have to be in a small space. Be careful which ones you pick. So. Keep them in line with each other, uniform. And this guy. Line this guy up with that. think just for funsies make uh, another bridge down this line center keep these things in line very rudiment and possibly do the same for this guy. It's all about uh, identifying it as it's unique. So it's a standalone. It's not kind of in the, the theme or the realm of uh, other logos which might just use the same font. It's expressing your artistic creativity, kind of. So, I uh, can't quite think of anything else to do with it, apart from, hmm, not quite, yeah. This is, uh, I think it came together quite nice. We might want to extend this just slightly, so it looks like a full T. And other than that, uh, I think we've got our logo. Maybe put this one back. 
and this is just me too. I mean, if you guys thought it looked nice and now I'm just ruining it for you, I apologize. So I'll put this here, this guy here. Close that gap a little bit. And this is just me holding shift and selecting them, then uh, using the arrow keys to nudge them. From here, I'll select all these guys, keep it in the same line. And that was relatively close actually, so uh, just looking at these, I think these lines might be off a bit. All our values have the same weight. So there's our next logo. And whether it's a winner or not, we will soon find out. We'll group this together, control G, shrink her down a bit, put this off to the side, lock it, control two. So now we're getting kind of an army here. And our last but not least, this eight bit guy, we will keep this guy relatively the same. I can't think of much to do with it apart from fill them with uh, color. And since our, our client would like a specific orange, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a box that we can just reference to. So um, I've actually got the orange written down and it is in a code secret code it's f e a f one two so in our um, hexadecimal account that is the uh, the cross hatch here or the number sign this is when you can put in hex codes and hex codes are good for when you're doing web design it's uh it's really the staple for all uh, color assigning because they're so specific so with our hex code here we will go f e a F, one, two, and that's our orange. So we'll keep our orange there, lock it, and this guy, create outlines, and there's a lot of points here, so I wouldn't even bother trying to change them. Uh, essentially, it's going to be just direct selects. So we've got that, we will control, shift G, now they are their own thing. Uh, kind of, I think there's some space in some of them and some space not. And that's just part of the uh, the font uh, aligning to each other. So what we will do is, again, I will make my T's bigger because we like our tech tire to stand out. We'll keep those all uniform. Line them. Okay. Hmm. So there's our first problem, just that. It's going to be. Oh, they're all boxes, that's why. Fancy that. Close off this black point with this arrow here. No, nope, maybe. Hmm. That's a tough guy. There we go. Perfect. So, no gap there. And is the E overlapping? That's our next question. Yes, just a little bit. And so we'll close off these points as well, taking these bars, sliding them over. And we want, since it's all boxes, we kind of want it to stay within the same uh, grid. There we go, that's the word I was looking for, grid. 
so keep our T relatively to the bottom. And because I resize this one and not the other one at the same time, I'll just drag, hold Alt, and then Shift. It keeps on the same line. And put this guy over here. Take out the last T. Uh, <clears throat> close this gap. only space I see like a little white so close that guy close that guy and then from there what I'm going to do is uh, going to fill these in with orange So it's just zooming in and zooming out, getting your angles and seeing which lines line up and which lines don't because it might cross over when you go into uh, something like Photoshop that you'll have a little gap there. And I'm not sure about you, but it irks me to no end. Uh, so we will take these guys. We will pull up the paint tool and that is right behind the shape builder live paint bucket all right another way you can do it as well is go to object and live paint and make so now this is edible for live paints uh we'll go to our eyedropper and that's going to be a nightmare but now we have it selected so we go back to our live paint up oh. we'll unlock that guy live paint and now it has it jump back in here and toss our colors in so if you select the color beforehand and then uh, pull up the live paint tool you will be able to uh, you'll have that color assigned towards your live paint because it is directly selected as opposed to when you don't have a color selected beforehand the live paint will just give you the color spectrum that it has on default, which uh, goes through RGB values as well as CMYK. And you can cycle through those with just the arrow buttons. Uh, so it's not my favorite. Could use a little tweaking. I feel like there's a lot more that you can do with this uh, logo, but given the time and the fact that we have uh, two other pretty decent logos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock these guys together. So control G, we'll shrink the size down a bit. And for presentation, we'll line them together. So we've got this guy here. We've got this guy here. Keep them all on the same size so they don't outweigh each other. And given the fact that that is higher than the other one. So keep that there. And then last but not least, we'll bring this guy back in because he has a different dimension. We'll just kind of keep him center. So they're all grouped. We'll line them directly in the middle. No favoritism here. We'll save this and send it off to our client, which is going to be my, the rest of my group will review it. And we'll see which one stands out, which one we like, which one we don't. We'll get some feedback. And during the process, it's usually uh, working through what they like, what they don't like. And if something stands out perfectly, work with that one font, make it happen. And then there you go. That's, that's basically all there is to it. Uh, next one I'm going to do is uh, remember from our first episode when we grabbed those Adobe Illustrator icons, what I'm going to do is assign a specific element to each one and create maybe four boxes that go across the bottom. Uh, I will hold off on that though until we've decided what logo we want to go with and how it's going to fit. But anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in. My name's Riley Miller. I am your Adobe Illustrator connoisseur 
And if you guys have any questions or anything stood out to you, if you guys want have any responses, comments, feel free to hit us up at techtyro.com. Uh, let us know what you think. And I will tune in next time with more uh, Illustrator tutorials. Thanks for watching.